For over a century, San Juan Capistrano has been a leader in historic preservation. Ordinary citizens have saved and restored a number of local landmarks, from the celebrated mission to the Los Rios district. But it hasn't been a string of unbroken successes. A number of historic buildings have been demolished since the 1960s, and now San Juan Capistrano faces another challenge. A century-old building, much loved by longtime residents, has been proposed for the wrecking ball. At this point, it's not much to look at. But 100 years ago, neither was the mission. And 40 years ago, the Los Rios district looked nothing like it does today. Welcome to Los Rios Street. I'm Steven Rios and this is my son, Santiago. Santiago's 10th generation Rios. And we are on Los Rios Street here, which uh, happens to be the oldest residential street in California. So we're here with our property on original Spanish land grant that was deeded to my great, great, great grandfather, Feliciano Rios, when he finished his tour as a Spanish soldier with the Father Sarah in the period that they built the missions up and down California. This here is the 1794 Montanez Adobe, which was built the same time my adobe was. Elsa Burns was the lady who had the backbone and led the effort to put our whole district, the Los Real Street District, was placed in the National Register of Historic Places. Without her efforts and the efforts of others, we wouldn't see this area viewed in its time, in its context, as it is now. Of course, I knew Steve Rios when he was a teenager. People knew each other, and actually I went and nominated the thing in, what was it, 76. And I did not need the permission at that time from the people living here. So I just nominated it and it went to Sacramento. And when the people here heard about it, they thought it was something horrible was going to happen to their house or their, their thing. And they were pretty mad at me at that time. They said, you didn't ask for permission. You didn't do this. And I said, well, yeah, I didn't need it at that time. Now, of course, it's, hey, we are on the National Register. We are historic, et cetera, et cetera. So that was pretty fun. Saving Los Rios Street was a major success, but it wasn't the first. Serious preservation efforts date back to 1910 and the arrival of a parish priest. His name was Father St. John O'Sullivan. Father O'Sullivan was one of our very, very beloved and renowned priests that spent his time here at the Mission San Juan Capistrano. And when he came as part of his assignment, when he inherited this parish, the mission was in, in bad shape. Father O'Sullivan came uh, to San Juan Capistrano by accident more than anything else. He was very ill and he was recovering from tuberculosis. And so Father O'Sullivan, when he was discharged from the hospital, he still was very ill and not expected to live very long. He came to the mission and he got off the train in San Juan Capistrano on July 5th, 1910 and came over to the mission and found it in total disarray, found it overgrown with a lot of weeds, and wondered what on earth had he gotten himself into. He decided that he would try and make the best of a very bad situation. So he started by clearing the weeds and finding these incredible walls, and then realizing that there were a lot of missing parts to places at the mission. So he put out a call. If any of you had any bricks from the mission, please return them. No questions asked. Then he started making the bricks to make the replacements at the mission. He came up with the idea that it, in order to raise money to do this, he would start charging 10 cents to get in to see the mission. And he also was the first one to open up a gift store. He raised money, literally 10 cents at a time. And every time he had a couple of dollars in his pocket, he went out and bought more supplies to do it. And he pretty much did it himself. He's the one who really started the idea of the swallows coming back to San Juan Capistrano. He was a PR expert 
It was a way of getting more attention to the mission. He embraced the legend of the swallows. That's what they call it today, the legend. With us, it's not a legend. These birds have been talked about for so many generations that came back into the valley. St. John O'Sullivan, along with other priests before him, had noticed the migration of these birds that would come into the mission and build their nest. Why? Because there was plenty of agriculture around the mission then. When he wanted to restore there as chapel, it took a lot of work and a lot of effort. One of the things that was needed was there was no retablo in the back. Retablo simply means behind the altar. He was up in Los Angeles at the Archdiocese one day, and the, the bishop said to him, we've got a, an old retablo down in the basement. It's in pieces, but if you want it, you can have it. And it turned out that that is the retablo that we have there today. Father O'Sullivan was delighted to take it. He brought it down in 396 pieces. Is still there today. He was known as the great restorer of the mission. For somebody who came here to die, he wound up being here for uh, years. Without him, the mission would not exist today. Father O'Sullivan's genius for public relations saved the mission. But on All Saints Day in 1964, Heads were bowed in the mission chapel as San Juan Capistrano lost El Casa Grande, a beloved local landmark. There was a time in our history here in San Juan Capistrano, uh, 1964 and before, when there was really no protection or preservation or conservation of the historical buildings here in San Juan as we know it today. We used to have parties at the El Casa Grande, but the Junior Women's Club met there and uh, it was great fun and when it went it's just terrible. I remember the morning this house was destroyed, Casa Grande de las Rosas, and I remember passing on El Camino Real with my family on our way to Sierra Chapel to attend Mass. We got to the church and as Mass was being celebrated you could hear the loud cracking and almost explosion like noises as the wrecking ball hit this home and destroyed it. I remember seeing Delfina Oliveris, and she actually had tears coming out of her eyes. Um, and Senior Russell, um, he actually paused before he started the Mass again. And you could see heads go down in the church, you could see people bowing, and you could see people wiping tears away. And when it went, it's just terrible. This one, we lost all the little adobes along uh, behind the playhouse. So we've lost a lot of things. That's where Elsa Burns came in. She decided to get as many of our buildings on the National Register as she could, and she was very successful. The Las Rosas just missed the boat. As South Orange County continues to grow, San Juan Capistrano may lose another local landmark, the SDG&E building. The utility's current proposal calls for replacing the 100-year-old building with a new and larger facility. If you think about what's going on in current times here about historic preservation, you can go to north of town and find a building that we call the SDG&E building, which is a San Diego gas and electric building, small powerhouse that was there. And it's in kind of rugged shape now, and it's part of an effort to restore it and to save it rather than to have it demolished and passed out of our history and collection of memories. So the project that we have is the South Orange County Reliability Enhancement, and it is a project that's going to help with the reliability for all of South Orange County. Today, all of our power for South Orange County is served through the Telega substation. If we're to lose power at the Telega substation, we lose power to all of South Orange County. This project will give us the redundancy, the reliability that we need by serving our customers, not just from Telega, but from our San Juan Capistrano substation. It's close to 100 years old. It's showing a lot of the development of the history of San Juan and the surrounding counties. After all, it's the only Georgian revival building, but it is a very significant souvenir of times gone by. So this is why it's worth, number one, saving, because it shows the history, and number two, it's the only Georgian revival architecture we have here in this whole area. In September of 2011, there was a wide-scale power outage that impacted almost all of San Juan Capistrano and a lot of the surrounding communities. The gelato shop that was operating here at the time, when the power went out after a few hours, they decided to start giving away all of their inventory because a few hours later they would be sitting here with buckets of 
melted ice cream and nobody wants that. It's, it's ruins. SDG&E building's been there since before 1918. That was the far end of town. There was nothing after that except farms and ranches. So it was always a little spooky when our parents said, you're gonna go to the SDG&E building and we're gonna, we're gonna pay our bill. But it was also fun because there was a family that lived in one of the homes and the, the man that lived there was responsible for running in, um, the SDG&E building and his wife was responsible for collecting the fees. And she knew everybody in town, and it was always treat time for us because she'd either make cupcakes or cookies for us. So we'd go pay our bill, and it was minimal back then. And then you'd get a cookie, sometimes lemonade during the summer months. Well, it's only overgrown with weeds. It's not a broken down building. Otherwise, it would have hit the ground a long time ago. I'd like to see a museum, personally because we have a lot of artifacts that are stored at the Bowers Museum that they don't want any longer, which gives a lot from the history of San Juan and surrounding areas. We knew from the very beginning that the former utility structure in back would be something that, that the public wants to see. The last couple of years, we've been working extremely hard to see, can we still build our project and keep that building? Unfortunately, because of everything that needs to go within our site, the building just does not fit there as so we can move forward with the project. And I think what they're thinking is increase the electricity supplies because we have 14,000 homes looming on the horizon and they need power. So uh, it's not a benefit to San Juan. SDG&E has other properties that they can put it on, but it is easier for them to bulldoze that down and uh, build a three-story I call it a monster. The one interesting thing about cost, a lot of people ask us, why don't you move the substation somewhere else? Why don't you underground everything? And they say, you're not doing that because it costs the utility too much money. The funny thing is, is the utility doesn't pay for anything on this project. The project is paid for by the ratepayers. So the PUC wants the utility to look after ratepayers as we're proposing the project. Once it's gone, it's gone, period. And uh, when we moved here, there were many adobes over on the other side of the railroad tracks. And then they also, where the Franciscan Plaza is, there was this wonderful old brick hotel. It's all gone. We have lost a lot, and that's why I'm so hepped on saving what's left and making people aware it's important. We are working very hard with the city of San Juan Capistrano and the community at large. We want to make sure that if this project is approved, that it fits into the community. We have been here for 130 years. We plan to be here for over 130 more, and we want to be good neighbors. If you were going to make an appeal for this building, what would your appeal be? Dear sg &E, please think, if you want to be popular with people that pay their monthly bill to you guys, rethink your plans. It just doesn't fit here. It's just out of the question. The same thing Father O'Sullivan did with the mission uh, during that time period, 1920s and 30s, can be done to the sd &E building and kept as a permanent memory and part of San Juan Capistrano history.